So we have our cutaneous nerve coming along and going into the, you know, inside of its purple neural tunnel here, and this is muscle down here. This is hypodermis. This is dermis, and then we have epidermis way up there. And so th these would be the normal relations inside the skin organ. Okay, just schematic. And here, this nerve is pretty happy. It's got a nice aponeurotic ring that it's moving through and sliding easily through. And it's connected to the brain, and it's got a smiley face. It's happy. Okay, and then maybe there's a withdrawal reflex or something going on spinal cord-wise that creates tension in the body for some reason. And that's going to pull a nerve. It's going to mechanically deform some of these connections. Maybe the aponeurotic ring will be com compromised a little bit. The nerve won't like that because it will feel entrapped. And sometimes it's our own behavior that creates situations that where abnormal strain can occur. And we can temporarily at least solve the problem by just moving the skin over somewhere that's more comfortable for that person. And they can perceive it from inside. They can tell you if it's moving in a way that feels good to them or not. And so I recruit people to give me feedback. I don't try to wing it or anything. No, no. I get people to cooperate. In fact, I give them the responsibility of getting themselves better by giving them the job of telling me what feels good to them or what doesn't feel good to them. And I help them feel better with, you know, try to incrementally better, better, better until they're better. That's how I that's how I've worked out there in the wide world as a sole practitioner for just ever. Um, okay, so we can get descending modulation to happen. We can reduce noxious input, uh, all kinds of stuff. We can get them feeling better so that when they stand up, they can move easier. And then we tell them, move, keep moving like that. Keep going. Do that several times a day for the next several days. And maybe it'll never go back to the way it used to be. And that was my homework to give people. <laughs> uh, OK, so the concepts. Uh, just touching and moving skin innocuously, that'll do a lot of a lot of good. Uh, you can pull it all over the place, kind of, it'll, Barum Jam helped me fig figure out these pictures because I didn't have any, and he said, you need pictures, Diane. So anyway, you can stretch skin longitudinally, and that's uh, longitudinal distraction. You can unload it by pushing it together. You can shear it. It likes being sheared, by the way. Uh, rotational shearing, it likes that too. Contralateral unloading, this would be like a balloon technique where I didn't I don't have a balloon with me, but if you squeeze one side of a balloon, it'll expand on the other side, right? The skin organ is just like a balloon. We're it's, we're inside of a balloon. A heavy one, it weighs as much as the skeleton, but it operates with the same physics as does a balloon. So if you if you squish it on one side, it will link it'll widen and thin out on the opposite side of an elbow or a knee or whatever, a foot. You can do circumferential unloading, which is like you take a bunch of skin and you just bunch it up and lift it up off the body. That feels really good on knees and around occipits and all kinds of places, heels. Oh, um, Okay, anyway, you can make up your own stuff too. By the way, you can definitely do things however you like. Because what this is like, it's like being a jazz musician and improvising all the time instead of playing classical and having to do things according to some sort of strict protocol. We've tossed the protocol out and you make up your stuff as you go, whatever helps that person in that moment individually, because N equals one. Okay, you can move skin to help move nerves. Um, and I've got this slide in the wrong place. This is the Ruffini ending. It should be with the first uh, concept, not the second one. Anyway, sorry, I blew my slideshow here. Okay, so a Ruffini, it's like a, it's like a, a, a Golgi tendon organ or something, but it's in the skin itself. And, and Gandivia in Australia has studied muscle spindles and all kinds. Of, and he says the actually, Skin has all kinds of proprioception, 
And these guys, these Ruffinis are probably what are responsible for that. So the brain is reading the skin and reading its own movement off skin too, not just off of muscle. Um, oh yeah, here we go. Okay. Uh, Ruffinis and skin contribute to kinesthesia more than do joint receptors, he says. And they also contribute to tactile directional discrimination. So this was a study by Olison, my favorite guy in Sweden. And he, um, he attached a machine to, like, glued it onto the skin of a guy who had a spinal cord deficit resulting from some surgical intervention that went wrong. Anyway, the guy had motor control. He, could, he was a runner. He ran. But he had a sensory problem with his leg. Um, and so Gandivia thought, this, this is interesting. It was a dorsal column that was affected by the surgical mishap. And he attached this uh, contraption to the guy's leg, and he put him inside of an MRI and looked at the brain. <laughs> and so he, he had, uh, maybe he had one on each leg, I can't remember. But he, when he uh, worked with the non-affected leg, he saw the dorsal, uh, prefrontal dorsal uh, cortex light up a certain kind of way. And, uh, oh. and then he did it on the affected leg, and it didn't. No. There's a connection there. So he called that tactile dis directional discrimination. The guy couldn't tell which way the skin was being pulled in the MRI. Um, yeah, OK. So let's shorten and widen the neural container. I have neural containers, one for each of you. OK, here's my little gift. Here you go. Thank you. You're welcome. There you go. One for you, one for you. Thank you. One for you, one for you. And one for you, and one for Jennifer over here. OK, now, these are made out of bamboo. They're insensate. But the neural tunnels often are anyway. And so if you squish these things, you're going to notice that they shorten and widen, right? That's just plain physics. And if you pull on them, they will thin out and elongate, right? Space occupying matter is what they are. Stick your fingers in here and pull and you'll feel what a nerve might you'll feel what a nerve might feel like if it's entrapped. Okay? That's not comfortable, is it? So how do you get the nerve to not be entrapped anymore? Well you can shorten and widen the tunnel and the nerve will be able to slide through it easier again. Okay? Simple a simple concept. Um, and there's all kinds of tricks to, to be able to do that. At least in my brain there is, and I'm sharing my tricks with you. <laughs> <laughs>